Hi everyone, my name is Jessica Kotlovitz, also known as The Green Dietitian, and today I'm going to be talking to you about nutrition for babies from six months. So from six months, we start to introduce solids to babies, so that means we start to give them food other than their breast milk. And we don't want to do this before six months of age because babies just aren't ready to digest food. Their stomachs aren't ready to handle solid foods before the age of six months. So there are some signs that your baby might be ready for solid foods. And it's not, you don't have to strictly start solids at six months. You can wait a week or two after six months if your baby's not showing all the signs of readiness. So some of the signs of readiness include your baby being able to sit up nicely in a high chair with support, your baby showing interest in your food, your baby being able to take a piece of food or a toy and bring it to their mouth, and also your baby losing their tongue thrust reflex. So sometimes when babies have things put in their mouth, they kind of thrust their tongue out and push it out. That's a sign that they're not ready for solids yet. So from six months of age, your baby gets most of their nutrients from their breast milk, but they do start to need some additional nutrients other than what they get from breast milk, particularly their iron needs are really high at this age. So we want to really focus on giving them some iron rich foods and they do need some extra energy from food other than what they get from milk. So we want to just start giving them food that has energy in it, some iron rich foods, and obviously we want to focus on fruits and vegetables because that's such a good source of nutrition for their long-term health. One common misconception about feeding babies is that babies need special baby food. So a lot of new parents, when they start giving their babies food, maybe they feel nervous or unsure of what to feed their babies and they feel that just buying special baby foods is the safe way to go. But actually, we prefer babies to receive family foods. Family foods are foods that you like to eat as a family and these are so beneficial for your baby because they teach your baby to enjoy all the flavors and textures that you enjoy as a family and to hopefully one day eat with you as a family. So we really want babies to be given family foods from the time they start solids, from six months of age, and not special baby foods. Preferably not at all special baby foods, but it's okay to give them some special baby foods once in a while if you just need a convenient option. One question that new parents always have for me is, what foods can you feed your baby? What foods do you have to be careful of giving to your baby? And how do you feed them family foods safely? So obviously babies of this age don't always have teeth and they don't always know how to chew their food before swallowing. Up until this age, they've only ever eaten liquids. So they've only ever swallowed and they've never had to chew before swallowing. So this is what we want them to learn in this, this first few months of starting to eat solids. So we don't want to just give them smooth textures that they can just swallow all the time because then they might never learn to chew before swallowing and that's actually quite dangerous for their risk of choking later in life. So we want to give them things that they have to chew but things that they can chew without teeth. So gums, if you've ever put your finger in your baby's mouth, you know that their gums are really strong so they can chew quite a lot without their teeth. So Usually foods that are gummable, if you can take a food and squish it between your thumb and your forefinger, it means that your baby can actually chew it with their gums and they don't need teeth to chew it. And those foods are usually safe textures and consistency for your baby. The foods we want to avoid are any foods that can actually get stuck in your baby's throat or in their windpipe and stop them from being able to breathe. So if they forget to chew before swallowing and something gets down the wrong way, we don't want anything that can actually block air from the windpipe. So those would be things like if you give your baby a piece of raw carrot and they take a bite out of it and that chunk of raw carrot gets into the windpipe, that can be dangerous for choking. If you give your baby whole nuts, like big nuts, like peanuts or cashew nuts, that can be dangerous. If you give your baby um, things like big beans, so for example, butter beans or grapes, whole grapes or popcorn, those can also be dangerous. So those sorts of things we want to grind up really fine so that your baby can swallow them safely. Before they learn to chew, it is new to them to have all these new textures in their mouth. And remember that they're only used to ever swallowing liquids, so having new textures going down their throat can feel a bit funny to them and often babies gag a bit 
but there's no need to worry if your baby's gagging. Gagging and choking are two different things. So only if your baby is choking, you want to intervene. If they're gagging, that's a good sign that they're learning to get food up and to not let it lodge in the windpipe, which could make them choke. So from six months of age, your baby's immune system is ready to start handling all different types of foods. You really don't need to restrict what types of foods you give to your baby. The only thing you don't want to give to your baby is any added salt and any added sugar. So when you're feeding your baby family foods, make sure to cook without added salt and sugar. And for the adults or the older people in the family, you can always add some salt in at the end if you like. A lot of people worry about feeding their babies foods that babies can be allergic to, things like wheat or nuts or cow's milk or fish or shellfish, but it's actually good to give these foods to your babies. We call these foods allergens. They're foods that babies can commonly have allergies to and adults can also commonly have allergies to. And we want to give these to our babies because giving it to them from six months helps their bodies get used to those foods so that they don't develop allergies to them. So the important thing is when we give our babies these allergenic foods, we want to just watch out for any reactions that might indicate that they have an allergy. So preferably give these foods one at a time. And if you see any reaction in your baby, anything like hives or a rash or diarrhea or anything like that, you can investigate further as to whether they do have an allergy to that food. One of the most important principles for how you feed your babies is something called responsive feeding. And responsive feeding means that you are watching your baby while they eat. Remember that babies at this age are still learning to eat, they might need your help, and they also can choke or gag, and you need to be there in case they do choke. So we always say stay within an arm's distance of your baby. If they lean forward, it means they want more. If they lean back or they turn their head to the side, it actually means that they're full and they've had enough. And we need to really respect that and listen to our babies because that's actually a way to prevent choking and to feed them safely and also to not overfeed them or underfeed them. From six months of age, we can start feeding our babies foods other than breast milk one to two times a day. So they still need to breastfeed as much as they did before, but now we are just adding solids in in addition to the breast milk. So when we're making food for babies from six months of age, we wanna give them a nice big variety of foods because all of our different foods have different nutrients in them and the more variety we can give our babies, the more we can get them used to different tastes and textures and also the more different types of nutrients we can get into them. This is also important for later in life so that they are less fussy in their eating habits and will eat a good variety of foods, especially fruits and vegetables, and then get a good amount of nutrients in. So particularly when we're feeding babies of this age, we really want to focus on orange vegetables and fruits. So things like carrots, butternut, nachis, those sorts of fruits and vegetables, and then also our dark green leafy fruits and vegetables, so things like spinach or broccoli, if we can give these two food groups to babies at least once a day, that would be ideal. Remember that at this age, your baby really won't eat a lot. They might only eat a bite or two at every meal, but that's okay. That's why they're still relying on their breast milk for most of their nutrition. So we really want to give them some fruits or veg at their meals. And then we always want to give them a food that's really high in energy or high in calories because they really need a lot of energy at this age and they need extra energy on top of what they get from their breast milk. So anything high in energy like a healthy fat. So even cooking their food with a bit of oil, putting some avocado or nut butters in their food, putting some coconut milk in their food helps to add in some extra energy or giving them some good starchy foods also adds in some extra energy. So giving them rice or potatoes or crackers or porridge, that helps to give them enough energy. And then the last thing we always wanna put in their meals is something rich in iron. So it could be some nuts or seeds or beans or lentils, or it could be a meat product or chicken or eggs to add some extra iron to their meals because they really need extra iron at this age. They're growing really fast and they don't get all of their iron for the day from breast milk. So today we're going to be making this lentil curry, which is such a balanced meal for babies and for the whole family. And it's so tasty and so enjoyable. So the first thing we're gonna put in is oil. Oil is a great source of energy or calories for baby. 
and we're also going to use coconut milk because it makes the curry so creamy and it's also a great source of calories and energy for babies. And then we're going to put in our onions and garlic and some ginger. And these are great aromatics. They taste amazing to cook with. And a lot of people leave these kinds of things out of baby food, but really it's so great to make baby food flavorful and to get them used to these flavors. And of course, these types of ingredients are so nutritious too. And then we're also going to put in tomatoes, which are really rich in vitamin C. So it actually helps babies to absorb their iron from their meals when we have vitamin C rich foods. Carrots, which are our, our dark orange vegetables. And then we've got spinach, which are dark green leafy vegetables. And then lastly, we've got our lentils. Lentils are really rich in iron and protein, so they're a really great food to give to babies. And a lot of people might worry that lentils are a choking hazard because they have these little pieces. But remember, these pieces are too small to actually get stuck in a baby's windpipe and stop them from breathing. Last ingredient we have in the curry is our cauliflower. I'm actually going to keep the cauliflower whole like this because once it cooks in the curry, it's nice and soft. And it's such a nice shape for baby to be able to pick up in their fist and to bring it to their mouth and gum on it. And it's soft enough for them to chew it in their mouth. And it's great practice for them. And then we're going to serve this all with some basmati rice. And I like to use white rice for babies because we don't want to fill their tummies up with too much fiber. So we don't really at this age want to give them things like whole wheat bread or brown rice because those things are really high fiber, it makes them very full, and then they sometimes can't eat enough because they get too full. When feeding babies, it's really important to keep the food hygiene nice and strict because babies of this age are young, their immune systems and their tummies are still developing, and they can get food poisoning or diarrhea if food is not properly clean. So firstly, we always wanna wash our hands properly before preparing food for our babies. Secondly, we want to make sure that we wash all the fruits and vegetables properly on the outside. Um, just with water is fine, but kind of give it a good scrub with your hand or with a brush. And then lastly, we want to make sure that cooked food or food that needs to stay in the fridge is always kept in the fridge. We don't want to leave food out at room temperature because that's when bacteria grows on food. Okay, so the first step in making our lentil curry is that we're going to chop up all of our ingredients nice and finely. I love to use a food processor because it really makes the ingredients nice and fine, but you could also grate all of this or you could just chop it really finely. So we're going to put our onions, garlic and ginger in the food processor and we're just going to get it nicely finely chopped. The reason I like things to be so finely chopped for babies is just because it's easy easier for them to swallow and they tend to gag a little bit less and there's definitely no choking hazards when it's nice and finely chopped. Okay, next we're going to put our carrots into the food processor and finely chop them. Again, you could do this by hand or you could use a grater. Okay, next we're going to put our spinach in the food processor. Again, you can chop this by hand if you like, just chop it nice and finely. Okay, and lastly, we're just going to add in our tomatoes also to be finely chopped. You Okay, so the first step with our curry is to heat some oil in a pan or a pot, about two tablespoons of oil. And then we're just gonna add our garlic, onion, and ginger and saute these. Okay, so once the onions and garlic have simmered a bit, we're just gonna add in our spices. So we're going to add in a teaspoon each of ground cumin and coriander and then we're going to add in about a tablespoon of our curry powder. We're just going to saute this a bit until they're nice and fragrant. Okay, next we're going to put in our chopped or grated tomatoes and just let those simmer for a few minutes. Okay, next we're going to put in our chopped or grated carrots and our cauliflower, a ton of coconut milk. We're 
gonna put in about a cup of soaked lentils. And we're going to just put in water. Okay, and then we're just gonna leave this to simmer with the lid on for a good 20 minutes until all the veg and the lentils are cooked. Okay, so now we're gonna dish up this delicious lentil curry for the whole family. So I'm gonna show you how I would dish this for a baby and then how you could dish it for adults or older children. Okay, so we're going to now portion our lentil curry for the family. So this is for an adult or an older child and this is gonna be for baby. For baby, we're also going to give baby some rice. Grains of rice don't need to be blended for babies from six months. They can swallow these and they're not a choking hazard. Some lentil curry with the rice for them. And we're going to give them a nice big piece of cauliflower that they can pick up with their hand. And then we can mix the rice in for them and they can actually scoop this up with their hands or you can help them with a spoon but they usually like to just use their hands to scoop up big chunks and put it in their mouths. If you'd like to get the full recipe for this lentil curry, you can check out the full recipe on the Food Lovers Market website. And remember to check out our other episodes about baby nutrition and nutrition during pregnancy and breastfeeding.